Hi gang, Scott here, continuing our walk through the Luminar AI tools. We've reached the Sunrays tool in the creative group. This tool adds a sun to your photo and you have lots of control over its placement, its size, the number of rays, how long the rays reach into the photo. There, there are a lot of different controls in this tool. We'll go through them all in this video. And then I'll show you an example or two of uh, you know, like little recipes about how you might apply this to your photos. If you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And if you're thinking about adding Luminar AI to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there that will save you a little bit of money. All right, so let's get into this. Let's get the Sunrays tool opened up here in the creative group. And there are loads of controls. We've got the main ones up here and then individual controls for setting the sun, setting the rays, warmth controls. Let's start at the top placing the sun center. So you click on that button and you get a pin on your photo where you can just click and drag it around to put it somewhere. Now nothing's happening right now because my amount slider is zero. I will place it right in the center of this gate, not because that makes any sense for this photo per se, but I want it to be somewhere we can easily see it. And as we walk through all of the sliders, you'll really be able to tell what each one is doing. So let me leave that there. And once I'm good with that, I click the button again, say I've placed it. Wonderful. Uh, the amount slider is exactly what you think. How much or how little of that sun do you want? And you can see that it shows up very brightly here because the AI understands trees and houses and things. It doesn't understand a Japanese gate, apparently, which is perfect for our work here because we want to be able to see that center of that sun. So amount controls a lot of things, really just the overall strength of everything else that's going on. We have overall look. An overall look actually controls the overall brightness, like how much of, you know, the sun was out this day, how much is it really shining through and how much of it is like, in this case, kind of like a, a very gloomy forest with just this beam of light, or it's saturating and permeating, you know, the sun is permeating through the entire scene. So we'll leave that as default there, but that's what that control does. Sun rays length, that one's a little more obvious. How much of the sun does reach in, right? We start with a little tiny point of light. We can have those rays reach as far or beyond the photo as we want. And then penetration. This is really kind of more like how much of the sun itself and how much of those beams will be visible versus hidden behind objects in your photo, right? So here we can start to see, all right, this is kind of being hidden behind this gate. This penetration, this becomes a little more meaningful when we're working with the sun in a place that uh, is more, let's say, understood by the tool. So I'm going to return back to the place sun center and uh, let me click that sun center. There we go. Now, as I move it through the trees, you'll notice that the tool understands things like trees. I put it behind a tree. I don't have a sun showing. I put it in this point in the sky. All right, that's a gap in the tree line. There'd be some brightness there. And so as I move it around, I get this interesting dynamically changing set of beams. And so let's say I put it here up behind these trees, but you know what? I really want that sun to show through more, I increase the penetration slider. It's going to say, all right, I'm going to see more of that. I'm going to have more of those beams come through. And if I push it really, really far, well, then I can make something completely unnatural, right? The sun would not be in front of these trees. If we're that close to the sun, uh, we got uh, we got different problems. We shouldn't be taking a photo. We should be running for our lives. So we'll, uh, we'll work with penetration, especially when you're moving it through areas that Luminar understands things like tree lines, houses, skies, clouds, those types of stuff. As I said before, you know, it, it, it understands this tree. It doesn't quite understand this, you know, this, this post, this part of this, this gate. So you will have some limited uh, ability to do these, uh, these penetration type looks. But if you have, really need to, you just dial it back down so you've got less of that reach. So those are the fundamental controls, those four that are at the top. You know, place the sun where you want it and then work the controls. Let me move this pin back to our uh, center of our gate here. 
we'll push penetration up very, very far so that we can see the sun clearly for the next set of controls. So next we have the sun settings. So the sun, what does that mean? That's kind of the center the circular portion of the control. Let me click off the place center. Sun radius. Let's watch the very center of that sun. Right? As a matter of fact, why don't we do this? Let's zoom in at 100% and we'll kind of put this over close to our controls here so we can see things very clearly. Sun radius. Watch the center of the sun. See it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This is getting now smaller and smaller and smaller. And it, you end up leaving like almost a hollow space if you go too small and the glow radius and glow amounts, you know, you, you, you can't compensate that much. But the reason I want to keep that small now is so you can see how glow radius works. The glow is kind of like the, well, the, the glow of the sun, right? You have that pinpoint of sunlight. Let's move that up a little bit more. And then you can see how much glow kind of comes around that. And then how much is the amount? So this is the reach of that glow. And then this is how much or how little of that glow there is. So you have quite a bit of control to make, you know, I, I kind of uh, imagine this being in a sky, maybe it's behind a cloud, a little bit of a hazy kind of sunspot uh, where, you know, there's some glow, but it, it doesn't really reach all that far. Uh, you could also make it much larger. The defaults tend to be a pretty good starting point, and you can always dial it back with just your general amount slider, right? Amounts controlling ultimately everything going on here. But if you need to make adjustments to the center part of the sun, you're going to use your sun settings area. All right, now what about rays setting? Well, that one, let's, uh, let's go back to fit to screen here for this one. We have the number of sun rays, and as we change that, we'll just see this interesting, almost spiraling kind of, uh, of look to it as you increase the number of rays. My personal take on this is fewer rays are generally a little better, a little more believable. You know, short of there being some sort of pinprick point of light and you have a, uh, like a high aperture photo, you know, you did something at f16 where you get, you get that starburst look, it would make less sense if I were to push this really, really far, but then have a photo with a shallow depth of field, because um, at least for us photographers, we would recognize that as, oh, that doesn't make sense. Those two things don't line up. Uh, I always try to aim for more believable photos. Now, randomize. Randomize is interesting. Randomize does exactly what you think it would do. It just randomizes kind of the, the, it's not even just the direction. It just really does randomize the the angle, the you know the the the, the reach, the, the the pattern of the of the sunbeams. I encourage you to use randomize. Kind of get your your rays to where you like them, and then just click around on randomize. And the reason for that is then your sun accents will be more unique. You won't have the same exact look as others might if they just adjust the number of sun rays. Play with randomize. You know, the AI tools are great. You know, I'm thinking of like the sky replacements. I just see lots of sky replacements with the same sky and people aren't adjusting it or bringing in their own sky. And pretty soon we're all gonna recognize that as like, oh, it's a luminar sky. You know, we don't want to have our photos go, oh, that's a luminar sun, right? We want this to look and feel believable. Now, the last bit, the last set of controls, warmth. We have warmth for the sun itself. That's the center part, right? If I push that really far, we can see there's a hot spot, very warm in the center. And then sun rays warmth is the warmth of the rays, right? This is obviously way over the top for this photo, but you see the difference where the warmth of the sun can be controlled independently from the warmth of the rays. And you know, maybe you want to have one of those types of looks where the warmth is less. You know, this is the default. You know, maybe I want to just have more of that white light kind of feel and reduce the warmth. Maybe you have a photo where you want to have that very, very warm rays. I would recommend that these two be somewhat close to each other. If you start doing a separation like this, it's going to look awkward or the sun warmth and the sun rays themselves it, it makes less sense. It's nice that there are two controls because you can adjust them independently, but generally those should be kind of close to each other so that the overall sun rays look 
is uh, is believable. They, they, they things match. And that was a lot of controls. Let me just recap all of those for you, right? Overall, look, this is where you want to start. Place your sun center, dial in an amount, cover the control, decide how far the, the length of the rays are, and how much or how little of those rays are going to be shown or hidden. Shown to the right, hidden to the left. How much do those rays penetrate and overlay an object in your photo? Settings for the sun itself, that's the center point. Settings for the rays. And then finally, adjustments on the warmth of both the rays and the sun center. All right, so now let's use this in practice on this photo. If we're gonna add a sun accent to this scene here with my, my forest and my gate, you know, how would I do this? What would I do? Uh, let's reset the entire tool and place sun center. The first thing I'd do is I'd want it up in the, in the forest. And now looking at this photo, I have brightness kind of on the right side. This is a little more shadowed. So my sun ought to be probably on the right hand side. And you know, really paying attention to this photo, this, uh, this sun is probably at my back because you know, this, this gate is quite well lit. Uh, but well, we're gonna go with, with adding a little bit of an accent. So we'd probably just want to at least paying attention to directional light where it seems that there is more on the, the front and it seems that like these areas are a little more shadowed to the left than it is to the right. I'm kind of looking here you know, at, the, at the pillars in the base there. There's not a lot of directional light because it was a very hazy day. Let's leave that there. Let's increase our amount. Okay, so we've got that beam coming through. That's actually kind of a nice placement. And usually, once I have the amount, I, I will start to kind of just decide where I want that really to come through. You know, um, I, 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 I tend to like things to, to lead toward my subject, and my subject is this gate. So something where I see more of the beams going toward my subject than out of the frame, uh, maybe something like that. Uh, the length of the sun rays, maybe a little bit less there. Penetration, probably also a little bit less. I tend to like things to be a little more subtle. Um, I don't really have to worry about the sun settings itself. The center of the sun, that's hidden. And so controlling these things, not really important. The rays setting, I, I like to have less rays than more. And then I will randomize and just try a few things on for size. Let's see, that one's, that one's pretty good. And now in that case, I may wanna increase the, rain, the length of the rays. You see how I'm using the tool. It's not, it's not top down. You do start at the top and as you adjust things, you may wanna to return to other uh, areas. I'm also gonna take some of the warmth out of this because this is not a very warm sky or a warm you know, lit scene. That sky up there, that is very, very empty, right? There's just, um, just a wash of gray. Finally, penetration, I think I'm gonna take that down even farther. Let's play a little bit. I'm, I'm a little less happy with how it's coming across the front of the gate. Last thing we do have, we always have our masking tools with these filters and uh, all these uh, different controls and tools we have. So let's see my softness up. I'll take the opacity there and just kind of sweep away a little bit from the gate. So I'm toning that down and then maybe just to match it elsewhere. And there we go. Now, You've seen other uh, other videos, and I've pointed out that the masks are often for the photo, for the set of pixels. And if I try to then reposition the sun, you know, things things change. It's like the mask is still kind of here, right? And if I uh, the mask doesn't move with my point of sun, I guess that's like my my ultimate point that I'm trying to make about the point of the sun. The mask is relative to the photo, not relative to the position of the sun. You know, so that's just a tiny little accent, right? So before and after. A couple of things to pay attention to, right? First off, we have that little nice accent of sunbeam. But second, look at the change of lighting in the scene, right? 
this is where the AI is doing more work. It's saying, you know, this is the overall look, right? You know, how, how much do you really want me to relight the scene? This is our overall look before and after. If I have a bright sun here and you're, you're shooting and you're in a place where there's a shadowy foreground, you get this high dynamic range situation going on, well, that relighting is happening for you with the tool. I want to show you one other example with the Sunrays tool, uh, something that you may not realize you can do, and it, it can be very helpful. And that is, let's reset this whole thing here and place the sun center Great, let's move our amount up. We've got this nice, wonderful set of sunbeams. Uh, the first thing is number of sun rays. If I bring that down, zero is, is an interesting thing. Like, you know, one sun rays length. The penetration can be like really, really bright, like this, right? You can make this like super bright, not so much of a reach per se. But what I'm watching right now is this outer kind of edge where we've got that glow. We had that, remember that's, we had that glow radius. We have a, we have a, a glow going on with the sun. That's not so much important in this example, but it's that penetration where we have that very nice, nice soft warm glow out here. Back to place sun center. I can place the sun outside of my photo. It does not need to be in the frame. It can be outside. And that can be helpful where you're trying to get this, this soft directional light. So I put this like way up over here. And now I may want to tone that back. Nudge it forward. You're also noticing I'm able to work with the position while all the other controls are still active. And so that's that's handy to have. So I can have this extra light source outside of the frame and how much or how little we end up relighting. If I wanted to make that, that glow and that overall look. So yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things out there. I change the rays. Nope. I still like that low number of rays for a, uh, a kind of off camera light source and we'll keep randomize at zero for that. But this is one other example where you can introduce an off camera light source. Nice just inviting sun glow and a little accent. So you don't have to keep that pin on your frame. Uh, now their only limitation is that you can only drag as far up as like the top of your screen, right? Um, a workaround, if you really like in this photo, I'm able to go out to the left and to the right pretty far. Um, I can't zoom out. As soon as I try to zoom out, let's say I try to zoom like, oh, 25%. Now I say place sun center. The tool zooms me back in right away. So um, a workaround, so if you really needed to go like say very high on your photo and you can't reach there, take the window that you're working on Luminar and, and make it smaller on your desktop. And then you can drag as high up as you as you may need to. You won't be able to see where the pin is, but uh, you can at least position it. And then if you you know didn't like it, you'd have to play a little bit of a game and reset the tool and, and, and go through the motions again. There's a workaround for it. But yeah, for this one, uh, let's let's get kind of back to where we were, where we, we kind of said this photo, the, the right hand side made more sense. We just add this nice extra glow here. Going low wouldn't make sense because this is a not, you know, you're going to have low directional light there. And uh, yeah, you know, that's a one more little accent there, just like before and after. Might be a little strong for the overall look. You can take the amount down. And that's that's starting to be, that's, that's, that's nice. I like that. So there you go. That is the Sunrays tool, top to bottom. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it gave you uh, more insights into how you can use that to accent your photos. You got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.